grade, sixth grade, less than 50. This is on the decimal number line using tenths as well as dividing by a fraction, okay? Mm -hmm. So, let's do this really quickly together. Go on and draw a number line on your paper, okay? <coughs> and here's what I want you to do. Because you're using graph paper, Eli, between each number you're gonna have uh, nine ticks, okay? okay? Or 10 spaces, 10 jumps, which is gonna be nine ticks, okay? So I'm gonna go in and draw it on my paper. Go on and put zero, one, and two, and in between the zero, one, and two, you need to have nine ticks. So nine ticks though? Yeah, for some reason it's nine ticks. Basically you need to have 10 jumps. Okay, Eli? Okay. You got it drawn? Yep. Okay, so basically, from zero to one, watch what happens. From zero to one, watch how many jumps I have, Eli. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten jumps from zero to one. How many jumps will I have from one to two? Ten. ten. Okay, so I call them jumps. They call them units, which is fine as well. Okay, but you, you don't want to call them ticks because there are actually nine ticks in between here but 10 okay. jumps, okay? That's how it ends up doing, okay? So help me out. I'm gonna go and erase this for just a second. All right, tell me how you would write this as a fraction, this dot right here. How long is this dot from here to That's here? 10. Wait, wait a minute. So 13 out of Close. 30? No, stay with me. How long? Let's pretend this is an inch. Okay. Okay. It's one inch and... So, one, one and three... And how many jumps? Tenths. Tenths. Okay. That's exactly right. But they're wanting us to use a decimal number to write this. Okay. So, what is three tenths as a decimal number? What is one and three tenths? One and three tenths. Yeah. Three in the tenth spot. Isn't that pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Now, if I'd have had a hundred of these, which would take me forever to draw, okay, then it would be one and three hundredths, and we'd have zero three because we want the three in the hundredth spot, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but this is tenths. We're doing tenths. So, as a decimal, this is what it looks like. All right, do this one. What is that decimal number? That is... Help me out. How long is it from here to here? It's not oh. one inch. It's not two inch. It's not three yet, but it it's is two. Uh, two and one. Seven tenths. Very good. So I did jump, seven jumps. One, two, three, four, five, two six, point seven. seven. Two point seven. Yeah. Because it's two and seven tenths, right? which is 2.7, okay? So you're basically learning how to take a number line and make it into a decimal, okay? Now, it only you can only make a decimal number if there are 10 of these units or 100 of these units. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. You can only make it into a decimal number if there's 10 or 100 or 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 jumps, okay? Because we need it to be tenths hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Okay? So if this had 16 ticks, you couldn't make it a decimal number. Yeah. Unless you were to do like uh, two and eight six, whoops, two and eight sixteenths, which is really two and a half, which is really 2.5. Okay? But we'll learn about that another time. Okay. Okay? It's not important that you know what I'm saying right now. Okay? I was just trying to show you that. Okay? Now, that's the first half of the lesson. The next half of the lesson is dividing by a fraction. Okay, so up to this point, Eli, you have learned 
you know how to take three-fourths and multiply it by one-fourths, right? How would mm -hmm. I work this problem? It would end up being... No, tell me how to work it. Oh, so three times one So I do this three. times this, and I get three. And then it'd be 16. Four times four is 16, okay? We're not adding, so therefore the four just doesn't slide over. We're multiplying, so the four does. You have to multiply. Good job. Okay, so it would be 3 sixteenths, and then we would um, try to uh, reduce that, which it will not reduce, okay? Yep. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, um, let's do something else, okay? So that is multiplying fractions, okay? Now you're learning how to divide fractions, okay? It's your very first lesson. Have you ever seen a problem like this? Where you have to divide a fraction. Yeah. Never seen one of those, have you? Okay, I'm gonna give you a quick clue. Um, this is probably actually gonna be on your next lesson. We're probably gonna teach this pretty soon. Okay, whenever you see this division, guess what you're actually gonna do? Multiply. But in order to multiply, guess what I have to do? In order for me to change this to a multiplication, I have to change the fraction to the right to its reciprocal. Okay, so help me out. Three fourths divided by one fourth will now become times four, four, four over one. Times four over one. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. And now you can do like normal. Okay, so three times four is twelve. Four times one is four. Four and twelve divided by four is three. Okay, we actually were able to take that problem and do it. Okay, so no. three fourths divided by one fourth is three. Three. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I were to take three fourths of a pie and divide it into one fourths, I would have three of them, right? Listen to me. If I had three fourths of a pie that I have and I broke it up into three different people, um, Leslie, Eli, and Isaac, then each would get one fourth, one, one fourth, and one fourth, which would be three. You see? Three fourths divided into one fourth, three fourths divided into one of those fourths, we would have three slices. See how that's three? Okay? But if it doesn't make sense illustratively, it doesn't have to. Just know what you have to do, okay? You feel good? Let's try another one. Ready? Um, Four-fifths divided by two-thirds. What would I do? Uh, be four times... Oh, I forgot about that. Okay, uh, you change it to its reciprocal, then multiply it. Multiply, and what happens to this? It switches around. Okay, so instead of two-thirds, it becomes three. Three halves. Very good. Now we just work it like normal. Four times three is twelve. Five times two is ten, and then we would reduce... Uh, two will go into both of them, six. Two will go into ten five times. But what's wrong with this number? It's an improper, excuse me, improper, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this says, <laughs> this says six fifths, so this is six divided by five, right? Yeah. Okay, five will go into six one time. <laughs> <laughs> we end up getting one and one fifth. Got it? Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. Okay, so that's how you would complete that problem. All right, now, listen, this is our last part of our learning. Okay, so listen to this question. It's a word problem. Okay, here's what it says. How, I'm going to, okay. So, I'm, I wrote this on here already. So, it says, how many quarters are in $3? Okay, that's four. Okay, now, so, you're actually trying to figure it out. 12. Okay, so you did that in your mind, but let's do it mathematically for just a minute. What would quarters represent as a fraction? Uh, 25%. Okay, 25 over 100, which reduces to one-fourth, right? Mm -hmm. So how many one-fourths are in three whole dollars? So it would be three times... Three divided by oh. one-fourth, right? How many quarters... Are in three dollars or let's make this um, more a way to understand it mathematically okay 
let's pretend like we don't have fractions because sometimes it's hard to think in fractions. So if I said how many fives are in 45, how would I do that problem? How many fives are in 45? I would take 45 and divide it by five, right? Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm doing? Yeah. So how many fives are in 45 would be answered like this. Do you see that? Yes. So how many one-fourths are in three would be answered like this. 40, uh, sorry, three divided by one-fourth, which you can't do like this. Okay, which I'm going to show you. But that's 3 divided by 1 fourth, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing, 3 divided by 1 fourth. Okay, do you understand how we got it into this? Do you understand how we did that? How many quarters are in $3? 3 divided by quarters. Got it? Okay, now, so let's write this down. You can go on and write that. Okay, so how would I work this problem? Mathematically. Um, we only know how to uh, multiply fractions. We don't know how to divide. Well, we learned how to divide them, but what do I do? Well, you do the same thing. Oh, you can yes. do 3 over 1. Okay, so this is going to become 3 over 1. 4 over 1, and then so, change um, it to... Okay, so I'm going to make this 3 over 1. Okay, and this? Add it to a, like a... Change it to a... Multiplication. Multiplication, and what happens if I do that? And then you do 4 over 1. Very good. And just do everything. Okay, so let's do that. Four times 3 times 4 is 12. 1 times 1 is 1, so 12 over 1 is 12. Which, that's what you told me the answer was. You did in your mind. Okay? But sometimes you're not going to be able to answer it. Sometimes they'll say, how many 1 eighths are in $3? You can't figure that out because you're not thinking of in quarters. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let's do another problem. See if you can get your brain wrapped around it, okay? Ready? The diameter of a penny is three-fourths of an inch. That's how much a penny is lengthwise, three-fourths of an inch. Okay. Okay? They want to know how many pennies are needed to make a row of pen Well, I'm sorry. How many pennies are needed to make a row of pennies that equals six inches long? Okay? So three-fourths times six? Close, but let's think of division first. How many pennies? Six divided by three-fourths. Six divided by three-fourths. Excellent job. Which would be six over one, four over three. Which would be six, six over one. Why it? Times. This yes. switches. But when we change that to, from division to times, four over three, right? Yeah, and then it's 24 over three. 24 over three. Which is, then we divide it. Eight. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Good job. So, how many pennies are needed? 8 pennies are needed to equal 6 inches. You feel like you understand it? Mm-hmm. All right. If it helps you, you don't have to listen to this unless you want to, but if it helps you for us to say how many 3 fourths are in 6 inches, or, yeah, 6 inches, then what we would do is go how many fives are in 45. And for me to answer this problem, I would say 45 divided by 5. So for me to answer this problem, I would say 6 divided by 3 fourths. Or this one would be 45 divided by 5. You see how I did that? Mm -hmm. How many 3 fourths are in 6? Let's just put normal numbers in there. I would say how many fives are in 45? I would answer it like this, 45 divided by 5 which equals nine, right? Mm -hmm. How many three-fourths are in six? I would write it like this, six divided by three-fourths, and then we worked the problem a while ago, okay? That is lesson 50.